Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Allie Beerman, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, the show connecting heart and mind. If you've not yet done so, please go ahead, rate, and review our podcast so others can find it and share it with your friends who are also figuring out why their world looks the way it does and how to control what's happening. Now, I'm about to share the review of the week and it comes from B. Shiny in the United States who says, being happy. Listening to Ali infuses me with happiness and gratitude. I love the reminder that being happy is the most powerful tool to raising your vibration. Thanks, Allie, for all your enthusiasm and willingness to share your insights with us. And I thank you for letting us know that what we're doing here is making a difference for you because that's the whole point of our being here. Now, before I jump in with this week's very special broadcast episode, I want to remind you about the very special gift I made just for you. You're here because you're starting your journey on your spiritual path. You're figuring out why does your world look the way it does and what forces are working out of my awareness. It's the invisible stuff that makes your world look the way it does. And so I created a very simple, quick read document called Step in a New Direction. And you go down to the show notes and you can download your copy. And once you get that first step going so it makes sense to you, then we'll move on to the next step. Now, today's episode is something I thought you'd enjoy. I have a number of episodes, 26 actually, that I've done so far. And I thought, you know what? There's some really cool stuff in each of those episodes. And I'm going to go back today and I'm going to take just a snippet. Actually, I call it a pearl of wisdom, a pearl, a highlight, something you can use today or use one each day to make your life flow so you'll stop hitting all the bumps along your journey. Enjoy, and I will see you here next I, week. I do. One, of the, the, one of the things that I really subscribe to and and i try to live is to remain at peace with um your your circumstances your surroundings the people in your life and um and one of the things that i have learned is that the better my ability to forgive things um, in in my life and my circumstances, the um, the the more uh, the more it seems like opportunity opened up to me, uh, and the the more I I succeeded, and I, I think um, I think that a lot of people throw up these hurdles in their lives um, by by carrying baggage. A, uh, around with them that uh, does nothing but but hold them back and 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 as long as as long as like it's like being chained essentially having a having a ball and chain like a like a literal ball and chain um and the 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 really crucial thing i think for most folks to understand is that ball and chain is is represented by all of the regrets in their lives and all of the done wrongs uh, that, that, that they have 
perceived and experienced and um and they and they don't let it go they don't surrender to that which is greater than them um and in 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 that process um they they they're or in the lack of process they're they're held back but when you let go um and 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 just forgive um uh, all kinds of beautiful things and, um, and, 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 and miracles, you know, happen, <laughs> you know, just really, really cool things happen in, 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 you know, start happening in your life. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to do more of this. I'm going to let more go. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to live in the past mm-hmm. and I'm not going to, particularly live in the future either mm-hmm. i'm going to live in the now right mm-hmm. and, and i'm going to let, let go of those things that are preventing me from living now like right and, now and it, the woo woo term yeah. came out to denigrate mm-hmm. this because the teaching of the western world has been you have to be able to see touch see it and touch it or it's not real and there's more that we can't see and touch that's real than what we can. So the, some people feel, some people see, some people hear, some people just know things that they didn't know how they came to know. Some people have um, other kinds of experiences and it's just important to honor each individual's way of interacting with nature. And the methods that we can can nurture within ourselves, maybe even to become a hearer or become a seer when we didn't think we were, but we wanted that. You know, I always used to, I used to go, how come they can see energy and I can't (laughs) see it? I want to see auras. I want, but then I realized, well, I see within. Mm -hmm. I see whole realms within. Wow. Just because I don't see what they see mm-hmm. doesn't make my seeing anything less or anything greater. Well, I think it's kind of twofold. The first is um, that it's really important to love yourself. It's why I'm called the self-love enthusiast. And I like to tell people before you stop listening to this call and, and it's ending here, make a commitment to yourself that you're going to do something good for yourself. Just one thing every day. Just make that commitment and stick to it because so often we put all of our needs behind everybody else's. So I would encourage everyone to do that. And the other is, you know, trust your guidance more. And if you need that, if you need, use the tool I suggested to learn how to tune into that guidance. So get what you think it is then ask for a sign and see what the sign is. And what you'll discover very quickly is you're on track way more often than you realize if you just pay attention. And the other the other key to trusting is following through, because if you if you get guidance and you ignore it all the time, then you're building the wrong way. So you need to follow through. (laughs) Your state of being is a is a creative element that creates your reality. So if your state of being is poverty or poor or ungrateful, then that state of being will create your reality. You know, so what? So at, at any time, you can change that state of being and attach it to a new state of being, state of love. So I am love. I am peace. I am. But it's not just the words. It's your state of being, that thing itself, that creates your reality. If you put yourself in a state of abundance, then you you get to experience all the things that that state comes with. You know, gratitude, you know, manifestations, you know, love. Um, so um, as we change our states, we get to experience all the benefits of that state. I wrote a poem called Responsibility. And if you like, I'll share it with you because it's a very- Oh, absolutely, uh, please. Sure. So it goes something like this, responsibility. Your life is based on how you respond to it. Take a minute and meditate on this. You have response ability. So take responsibility to control your destiny. 
it really doesn't matter what happens in your reality, but it's how you respond to it, you see. Practice makes perfect, yes, indeed. So practice responding to life peacefully and lovingly, and the challenges will become a blessing entirely. Always ask yourself, what can I learn from this situation? Because everything that happens in your life is part of your transformation. Remember, it's all good, it's all God, it's all energy. So practice and perfect your response ability. That when you stop growing is when you start on a downward slope to the end. So keep your mind and your body active and you will age well. Person. My favorite, which I kind of sometimes throw in there when I do NATO chart readings, is to work with parents to know their child's chiron, to know their child's pain and their lessons of why they came on this planet. Because so that they're constantly not triggering that pain all the time in their child, but kind of working through that pain with them, you know, because the pain will never go away. You'll always experience that pain. But how can I love my child through that pain so they don't really feel that? So I'll give you an example. My daughter's Chiron um, is in her fourth house, which is about family and home, right? So for her, she feels like we moved a lot when she was really young. And so I try to stay home with her as much as I can rather than going out and doing things when I have her now, because you know I share custody. So I really tried to like lay in bed with her, read to her, because fourth house is all about nurturing mother, cancer, like the home. And so I try not to feed into that Chiron pain because then she starts acting out. And I know when she starts acting out that she needs me to kind of like come in and nurture her. I just wish for, for all of us in some level to have a taste of the love that we were talking about earlier, you know, through our own ability to be compassionate towards our human selves, because being human is so complex and it's filled with so many paradoxes and so many double binds. And so I, my, my wish really more than a message is just to slow down and feel yourself, to find ways to notice nature, to be able to access the mirror of our own stillness through the natural world, through friends who can really listen deeply through our own meditation practice, but just to slow down and, and recognize the beauty um, and the gifts of the natural world. I just want people to know that it is, you know, your nature, it is our nature to be love and to be joy. So you're not meant to be suffering or be in pain anymore. That's the past. And now in this present moment during this ascension, we are meant to be much more. And so that is what I so desire for each and every one of the speakers. I'm sorry, the listeners who are listening for this <laughs> podcast in this show and that, you know, it just spark this remembrance in them of, who they really are already and who you really are is love and joy. Yeah, just know that above all else that you are loved. You are loved. You come from love, you return to love. And we just need to get past that, lift the veil from your eyes and just recognize that we are love period. And we are, we are fully 100% loved as we are. We, there's nothing we could do. There's nothing we can't do that takes away from that. In the fact that we exist, period, full stop. We don't have to do anything. You know, we just have to be, we just have to be. And that's just a beautiful place to, to come from, to live your life and just being and realizing you don't have to achieve, you don't have to go out and hustle and grind and do all these crazy things, you know, to try to, you know, win at life. Because we don't, I don't think we talk enough about listening skills. And I mean, you know, the statistics, it, we humans are listening, attention span is six seconds, a goldfish 
has a longer attention span than us. So we should be listening 70% of the time and really only speaking that 30%. So that 30% for anyone listening, and hey, this is in any part of your career, not just in sales, not just in business, um, in your life with your kids, with your spouse, significant other. Asking questions, right? When you ask a question, go into listening mode, allow the other person to speak. So the only time you really should be speaking is when you're asking a question or you're coming back and providing some type of a solution to whatever the situation is, right? Especially with kids, think about that. So when the other person is speaking 60, 70% of the time, think about the amount of valuable content, intel, information you're learning so that when you do go to respond, you're having this just magnificent conversation instead of taking turns talking at each other, which is currently what, what we actually do as humans. But you know, realizing that the, the vehicle doesn't really matter. It's not what's important. Where you're going, the destination that you're choosing, that's the thing that's most important. You should base yourself and your impression of self-worth on what you do, what you're capable of doing, what your skills are, not what other people might be doing or other people might be doing for you. The earth and humanity and the animal kingdom and the nature kingdom, you know, all aspects of life, we are envisioning it in the highest perfection that we wish to live in. Our thoughts and our vision and our imagination is how we create our life and Everybody does this, whether they know about it or not. People that are not on a spiritual path, they're creating their life. I mean, the people that have what I call soap opera lives, you know, with, you know, too many, too many uh, boyfriends or girlfriends that bring a little problem in and out of their life, or they can't keep a job, or, um, you know, they're, they have an addiction problem, or whatever, you know, people that do that. They have created that for themselves through their thoughts and their um, beliefs and what they what they envision for themselves, whether it's positive or negative. So when you know consciously how to do that, you can create a higher, better, more harmonious, more spiritual life. Religion locks us in so much to a certain way of being. When I was 24, I had a vision and visionary is not something that, you know, I do a lot of, I don't have a lot of visual stuff. My gift is clairsentience, I feel. But I had the vision, I was praying about whether to go to Reno that day or not. And I had this picture in my head of me looking at the switchboard, trying to flip, figure out which flip to switch, which button to push. And God was above it smirking at me. And I thought, you know what, God, I don't think you care whether I go to Reno today or not. I think it's fine with you one way or the other. You know what? I'm not playing this game anymore. And it was my life. I mean, I cleared through Oral Roberts University. It was always my choice. But I, I went, you know what, God, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust because I want to be used by you in life. But you're going to open the doors you want me to go through and you're going to shut the ones you don't. That's how you and I are going to walk together, God. It's not for me to tell anybody else how to walk with you. And I never went back to church and nothing bad happened. It was just that part was done. So being locked into a belief system and a box that doesn't suit you is not a way you have to continue to move on. God, creator, universe, source energy works with us wherever we are. And we can make that choice of empowerment in our life at any moment to then live in our greatest and highest power, not be giving someone else the power that we have. You pace yourself. Here's what PACE stands for. Peace of mind, not mind in pieces. Amusement. The absurdity is you are the ego. You are God. You are the limited self. You are the limitless self. You are all of it. And if I dare be naughty, which I already have been and will continue, it's divine masturbation. You're playing with yourself. C, curiosity as innocent as a child. You live in the question. You don't try to figure anything out. You are open to the higher part of you. 
that has the answers. And E, empowerment. You know that you created the problem, but you also have the solution. I like to call it S-O-U-L, solution. So it's all for your evolution to becoming the highest and best version of who you were born to be. I had this real sadness around the fact that I believe graveyards are filled with too many people who went to the grave with their story left untold, with their gifts left unshared. And I'd love to put an end to that as well. And so I love to help heart-centered entrepreneurs to get their message out to the world. And one thing, if we can put a link in the show notes for it, is I'd like to offer people my free guide. It's called The Simple Five-Step Process to Launch a Rockin' Podcast in Just 14 Days. And that's free and anybody can get access to that if they're interested. And so if we can put the link in the show notes, that'd be oh, wonderful. Absolutely. Well, I hope you enjoyed all those pieces. And I told you which episode everybody was in. So go back, go to the website, the link for our new website where you'll easily find all the episodes is in the show notes. Of course, if you already have a podcast player on your telephone, you can always access everything there easily. So I like to make both the video and the audio available, and I'm excited to be able to do that. I also want to make sure that you join our Facebook group because we're having some activity going on in there and it's about to go someplace to a whole new level because of what I've been doing talking with a colleague. Anyway, be sure that you get the link for our new page for the show and definitely take advantage of the gift from Michael Neely. Because the whole reason you're here today is because I'm here today is because of Michael. And it's because when I found him, I bought his book and I read it and I immediately said, oh, I just got to study with him and do this the best way that makes sense to reach you. Because it is all about you and I look forward to being here with you next week.